I guess there's not really much more to say. It's already all been said. But if you're like me, you need to hear it more than once. Amen? Amen. And uh, not only hear it more than once, but you need it ingrained in your mind. You need it written on your heart. And you need to be told over and over and over again. Amen? So you guys probably already figure what passage I'm going to be going to. So you can go ahead and open up there now. Right? If you've been listening, you know where I'm going with this. If you haven't been listening... Go ahead and open it up to Romans chapter 13. You guys might say, oh, no, here we go again. Listen, by the time you walk out of here today, you can say you're a scholar in Romans 13 verses 11 through 14. You got it now, man. So when somebody asks you, hey, can you teach a study? You're like, don't trip. Romans 13. <laughs> I, I, I've heard it every way it could be taught, but. You know, I, I want to encourage you guys and challenge you guys today because, listen, guys, this is a good thing for us. This is a good thing for us, for us men to be encouraged and to be challenged by the word of God. And I do believe that as you guys are hearing these messages and as they're penetrating your heart, I know that God is at work and that God is doing something in you. What the church lacks today is godly men. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about men that go to church. I'm talking about men that say no to sin while they go to church. I'm talking about men that when they open up God's word, it's life for them. It's everything to them. I'm talking about men that they don't start their day without starting in God's word. I'm talking about men that this is the only way to live, none other than living out God's word in their life. You see, guys, we heard a lot of great messages today. I, I, I know that because the speakers, the lineup was amazing. And I know that you've been challenged. But the truth of the matter is this. We can hear good studies. We can hear good messages. You guys can be patting each other on the back and you guys can be at your break and like, oh man, that was good. Oh, I was convicted here. I was convicted there. Listen, but if you do not believe it, if you don't walk out of here wholeheartedly believing it, then it's all for nothing. It's not going to take. When you wholeheartedly believe something, listen, you live according to it. That's what happens. Paul, in writing to the Romans here and encouraging them, he, there's a challenge there as to how we are to live, how we are to be as men of God. And listen, that's what the church needs today. Men of God, men who walk in integrity. And guys, listen, I'm not talking about how we come to church and all the God bless you's and all the, hey man, how you doing? I'm doing great, brother. Praise God. You know, I'm talking about, listen, when nobody's around asking you how you're doing, when you're on your own and you can say it is well with my soul. Why? Because you're a man of integrity, not when nobody else is watching, but none other than the Lord. You see, that's where all this counts, man. That's where it all lines up when it's just you and him. You see, behind closed doors, that's when man gets himself in a lot of trouble. And I'll tell you guys what. When Paul challenges the readers here to live in such a way, knowing that the return of the Lord is taking place, or it's going to take place, to live in that way. Because, see, when you read Peter and Paul and these guys, the way they wrote, it's like if Jesus was coming back in their day. That's the way they wrote. Paul is saying here that concerning uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and that it is a high time in verse 11. And this is what he's saying here. He's saying that the time, it's a high time. It's nearer. Our salvation is nearer. This is what he's saying here. Well, here we are 2,000 years later. If it was near to Paul then, how much more near is it now? Think about that for a moment. You know, we look at Paul and we look at Peter and we look at these guys in the Bible and then you get you know, brothers in the studies and, you know, they start talking and all, well, you know, I'm, I'm like Paul, you know, and no, no, I'm like Peter, you know, then you got the, the brother that's just always about love, you know what I mean? And <laughs> he's like, well, I'm just like John brothers, you know, listen, guys, listen, it's cool to look at how these men of God were. We know that they were powerful by only one thing. Jesus was in their midst. 
And then when he says, I must go so he can come, he gave him the Holy Spirit and the very same presence and power of God that empowered these men to preach the gospel and spread the word of God and the very same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the very same spirit that's in you and me. Yeah, give the Lord glory for that. Amen. It's in you. It's in you. And I'll tell you guys what. That's why when the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of the Lord, there is a grieving that takes place in a man's life of the Holy Spirit. Why? Not because of, 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 what, we, of what we do or don't do. It's, it's because of what we, how we sin against our body. You see, the Holy Spirit is in us. The Bible makes it very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that we are bought at a price. We're no longer our own. And the glory of the Lord is Holy Spirit dwells in you and I today. People might not think much of you, but God thinks so much of you because he put his very presence in you. That's radical to me. Very radical to me. That's like a chin checker when I find myself in a, you know, little heated, you know, debate with my wife. It's like, it's like, you better watch out, dude, you know, because I already know what's going to come out of her mouth. And you're a pastor, you know. <laughs> so I don't like hearing that. So the Holy Spirit, you know, he, he, he's challenging my heart. David, hold, hold on now. Hold on now. Yes, yes, Lord, I hear you. Yes. You know, babe, just pray. No, just kidding. But look, we have the spirit of the Lord in us. God's power in us. And God has given us that. And we are to walk in what the Lord has given us. Why? Because there's only one thing that God wants to do. He wants to accomplish through you. Men, listen, one thing. I don't know what your guys' background is like, but listen, I know that in, in this crowd at this size, some of us have, 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 have been rejected. Some of us have felt what rejection is like. Maybe as a, as, a, as a young man, as a kid, you were rejected. You know, maybe you were that kid that was never, he was the last one picked to be on the team. You don't raise your hand, but... You know, anybody ever been there? Okay, so now think about it. Or you were rejected by a parent. Or you were rejected by people your whole entire life. And even maybe now as an adult, you still feel rejected at times. But there's one who will never reject you, and that's the Lord. He says, come as you are. Because, listen, come as you are. Come as you are. Because he has something for us. He, he paid it all, listen, to bring us to that point. See, if the price would have never been paid, we could never be brought up to that point. And he paid it all. In other words, he said, listen, you don't worry about it. I got that covered. Revelation 13, 8 says, before the foundations of the world, Christ was the lamb that was slain. You see, God had it all worked out beforehand. Guess what? For you. Awesome. And now listen. So here, being reminded, as the readers are listening, notice in uh, chapter 12, starting in verse 1, your attention, please. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, I start there because, listen, the whole purpose of this whole thing of Christianity and where we are in Christ is how we present ourselves. We present our bodies as living sacrifices unto God. They're being presented. And listen, and this is something that has to be done on a daily basis. You walk away from this conference today and guess what? Tomorrow's here if the Lord tarries. Guess what you have to do? Present your body as a living sacrifice. Not, hey, good conference yesterday. Yeah, man, it was good. Oh, I was convicted, man. Listen. Yeah, some of you are laughing because you're like, I can't wait to tell everybody I was convicted. Like, if that's going to do something. You see, think about it. Is it conviction or is it really guilt? Two different things. Guilty is just because you've been caught. Conviction draws a man to repentance. Repentance means to turn away from it. And I don't know about you, but listen, I've been in men's conferences before and I've sat there and I've received and I was listening and I'll tell you what. And I still had it determined in my heart that I was still going to do what I did before I came. Yeah, I know I got this struggle, but man, you don't understand. You know, you're a pastor. You got it all together. No. You need to second guess that. We're still human. We're still men. And let me tell you something, guys. If you don't say today is the day that it stops, you're going to walk out of here not dealing with the issue that's at hand. Whatever it might be, all these messages, I do believe that God has already pointed out things in your life, on your heart, and saying, it stops today. 
But then the choice is yours, amen? You're going to do what you want. But I'll tell you what, if you want to stop doing, if you want to stop being bound like Jack talked about, Pastor Jack talked about, you know, Lazarus coming out of the tomb and him being unbound. Listen, if you want to be unbound, guys, listen, don't just let this be another pep rally, man. Say, this is the day. I mean, listen, you know what my prayer was? Lord, that these men would go home to their wives, for those of us that are married, and that their wives say something happened. Not, oh, it was good. You should have been there. No. <laughs> did, did you watch it online? No, you know, it's like. <laughs> no, that you go home and literally it's, it changes everything. We can sit, share the same passage over and over and over again because the Bible says that we can. You want to know why? The Bible says that the word of the Lord does not return void to him. Presenting our bodies as living sacrifices and know that how he's challenging them to live as Christian, to exercise their gifts as the body of Christ. And then he says, listen, and when you're out in the real world. Submission to government. Obeying the laws of the land, if you will, this this is what he's laying out here. He says, listen, you're to you're, you're to glorify God in your bodies. You're to present your body as a living sacrifice. Listen, in every aspect of your life, in every area. And that's the truth of the matter. When somebody sees you, what do they say? Do they say, is that a man of God? Or do they say, that's he, or, or the, well, that's a Christian. Now, let me tell you something. A lot of people call themselves Christians today. A lot of people do. It's a matter of how a man walks before the Lord. That God gets the glory. God likes when you walk in close proximity to him. Ever read Genesis chapter 5? man who walked in close proximity to God, he was, and then he was, what? Oh, you guys know. It's like preaching to the choir here, man. Listen, guys, listen. We need this. We need this in our lives, especially in the period of time that we're living in today. We are there. And listen, if you don't believe that Jesus is coming back, okay, if that is not a reality in your heart that Christ is coming back, then you're going to have a lot of problems walking. A lot. Because there's not going to be no urgency there. There's not going to be no challenge there. There's not going to be no correction there. You're going to be walking. It's just going to be like, well, you know, hey, if it happens, it happens. I mean, hey, they've been saying that for a long time. You know, some of you that have been around a while, you remember A Distant Thunder, A Thief in the Night. Remember them movies? They brought them movies out, man. Everybody was scared at church. They were like, oh, no, look, at it. it's going gonna, it's gonna to end today. I remember a rapture clip that, 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 was on, that was on YouTube for a while there. You know, and the pastor's preaching, then boom, the Bible drops, and then the people are gone. Well, there's a couple left. <laughs> so I played that one night at church. You know what happened? Everybody came to the front for prayer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, so I was like, well, let's play this every night, man. This is how this is. This is it's the only way this is going to work, you know. But listen, guys, that's what motive. Guys, listen, I know there's you, you can't tell me otherwise. I know that Christ is coming back. That's why I, I'm, I'm living for the Lord the way I'm living for the Lord. Not so that people can see, you know, oh, look at Pastor Dave. He's so holy. Hey, listen, no, at all whatsoever. It's all about Jesus. He said, I am coming. Did he not tell the disciples, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And guess what? He says, and I'm going to come back for you. He's coming back. He's coming back. Just hold on a little bit longer. He's coming back. It's going to be over. No more bill collectors. No more caller ID. You don't got to worry about any of that, you know. He's coming back. And listen, guys, when you believe that and it resonates in your heart, guess what? It's going to come out in how you live for the Lord. He's coming back. You know, when I walked in the back back there, I, I thought they were setting me up, man. There was... You had a huda back there, chief of police, and then 
you had a you had a you know a guy who used to be an attorney that that that's here at the church, and then you had a, a judge. I met a judge back there, a judge. I was tripping out. I'm like, man, what kind of what's going on? What kind of crazy joke is this, man? I was like, man, I thought it was that, you know, that you got punk show, man. I was like, man, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> good stuff, man. Good stuff. God's good. But that's how awesome God is. Let me tell you something. You know what can bring a chief of police, an attorney, and a district, uh, 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 a judge together, and a guy like me? Yeah, so I'm sitting there and I'm talking to the judge. I'm like, hey, I got a good judge story. Not a judge joke, but I got a good judge story. <laughs> so I'm sharing with him. And, and, you know, and I'm just sitting there. I'm just like, God, you're awesome. I'm just thinking that in my head like, man. And I was thinking, do I have anything else I need off my record? <laughs> since, I got, since I got this guy here, man, you know, hey, bro, hook me up, bro. You know what I mean? I was like, wow. I was already thinking. I'm not going to lie. I was. I was thinking that. But anyways, <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Presenting our bodies, amen? Listen, guys, listen. This is what he challenges them to do and how they're to live. And, and listen, he says, submit to government. There, there, was, there, was, there was authority back there. And listen, and then he talks about the love for your neighbor. A love for one another. A true, genuine love. And, and, and listen, that encourages, that brings the men together. It challenges the heart in a way that I think you and I probably don't fully understand. Because listen, it, 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 it casts out unforgiveness and bitterness and malice. And I'll tell you guys what. That's what you need to be ruled by. You need to be ruled by love. Why? Because he's saying here, as he's encouraging them here in chapter 13 concerning love. He says that love, man, it fulfills the law. It does. Live for the Lord. Love God. Love people. Love his word. Walk in love. You'll go a long way. I guarantee you. If you hate, man, you're just going to look old. That's what happens. Yeah. Unforgiveness and bitterness and, and hate. Listen, you, you just look a lot older than what you really are because that's all it does to you. It messes you up. You become that guy that nobody wants to be around. You're negative about everything, you know? It's like, hey, yeah, we can go, but don't bring him over there. Don't. No. Then he's like, hey, where are you guys going? Nowhere. No. <laughs> and then like you're repenting in your mind. Lord, forgive me. I know I didn't lie. You know, I know I lied right now. But man, Lord, and there's like, are you sure? I'm sure, bro. We're not going nowhere, man. All right. See you, later. you guys all you guys all jump in the car together and take off. You know, what I mean? it's like. But listen, love covers a multitude of sins. The word says we know that it's good for you. It's good for me. It changes our mindset and our heart. Because a lot of you, like me, we didn't live our lives according to love at one time. Our lives were lived according to hate, according to pride, according to unforgiveness. You were going to pay everybody back. Anybody ever been there? Oh, I, I, I got something for them. And what happened? The Lord came in you, and guess what? All that is gone. You remember when you felt that burden lifted, right? You remembered when you saw them more than what they did to you or what they were in front of you, but you saw them for the first time through the eyes of the Lord. And guess what happened? All of a sudden, you start doing your walk and those same emotions come back. And now you're like, well, I could still have those feelings as a Christian. Jesus turned over tables in the temple. <laughs> so he got angry. No, listen. We're to love. That's how people will know who we are. What if the disciples ask Jesus? How will we know if they're of us? And what did he say? They'll know you by your love that you have for one another. There's something about the body of Christ. Listen, guys, that the world hates so much. Because we love one another. We're trying to take as many people as we can with us. Some of you are trying to take your parents, your sons, your daughters, your brothers, your sisters, your co-workers, your next door neighbor. And this is what he tells him concerning this time. Look at what he says here at the end of chapter 13, guys. Listen, he says, and do this knowing the time that now it is high time. We're there. Everybody say we're there. Look to your neighbor, say it's close. Now ask him this question. You ready? You guys get all excited when I get you all into the whole thing. Everybody starts. It's not a time to talk, okay? Listen, just look to your neighbor and just say, are you ready? 
You know, some of you are just like, why are we even saying this? You know, <laughs> he should know I am. I'm the one that brought you here. Of course I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> but the truth of the matter is we could laugh about this right now but let me tell you something when that trump sounds the question is mm, man are you ready because it's no joke there it's the real deal jesus said he's coming back guess what guys he's coming back and this is what paul is saying listen it's high time listen awake Obviously, if Paul here is saying awake, that's because, listen, he's writing to believers, not non-believers. And guess what he's saying here? That for the believer, it's time for you to awake out of sleep. There are some sleepers in the church, let me tell you. Yeah. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Why? For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Some of you have been walking with the Lord for 30 years, and guess what? You're still doing the same things you were doing 30 years ago. It's time to wake up. Yeah, I like that. It got real holy in here right now, real quiet. A <laughs> couple of, you know. But it's the truth. Guys, listen. He says the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Guys, listen. We know what the, what the night is in reference to here. It's, 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 it's wickedness. It's wicked living. It's the old life. It's far spent. We spent too much time there. I'm tired of it. I like the way how, how Peter put it in his epistle concerning the lifestyle that we lived prior. Like, we're done with that. How many of you in here, without raising your hand, I'm going to ask you this question. You're done. You're done. I just want to live for the Lord. How many guys I meet? Bro, you know, you know, hey, Pastor Dave, hey, you know, bro, hey, you know, look. I get that a lot. Hey, you know, they're thinking of what to say without a bad word coming out. You know, hey, look, uh, 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 hey, hey, you know, uh, uh. <laughs> and then they say, and then they say, you know, then they say, yeah, I just, I just want to live for the Lord. And that's cool. It blesses my heart. But I say to myself, do you realize what you're getting yourself into? It's good. It's a blessing. It's the best decision you'll ever make. Your biggest enemy is you. You could want it all you want. But you could not do nothing about your flesh. And the want and the desire to want to be right with God and do for the Lord will always be there. But the lethargic attitude we have concerning the flesh will never get us there. It's kind of like that old guy Eli and his two sons, Hophni and Phineas. What do you think would have happened if he would have did what he should have as a high priest and removed the servants because that's what his position was? He never did. Or as a father correcting his sons, he never did. He just asked them, why are you doing this? All gone. You see, some of you have been made aware of where you're at today and you've realized where you need to go and if you just walk out of here today understanding where you are and knowing where you need to go and there's no progression moving forward guess what's going to happen you're just going to be like Hophni and Phineas, man servant nothing really happening Wake up. It is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us. Guys, listen. We're to wake up. And what does he say? We need to change our clothes, man. We need to put on Christ. Did you put on Christ this morning? Listen, don't get all excited and amen and start bobbing your head and everything. Listen, I'm just asking these questions because I want these things to resonate in your heart. Did you really put on Christ? What was it like when you woke up this morning? Listen. We need to put on Christ. And then he says here, let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness and not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. Notice, guys, that he's writing to the believers I like the fact that uh, Pastor Jack pointed that out a little bit about, you know, that there are some that 
profess to know the Lord and, and love God and, and live for the Lord, but yet they're, 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 they're living a different life. Eventually, guys, listen, that's going to catch up to you. Numbers 32 says your sin will find you out. So some of you today, all these studies have probably been a reminder a reminder for you that man continue to move forward and man praise God and some of this might have been maybe not a reminder some of this is probably a clear warning to you that hey you got to stop and then another part of it might just be like the choice is yours if it doesn't stop today be prepared for what's going to happen ahead see I like those challenges for me even as a pastor as a man of God, I love to be challenged. And guess what? That's why I get into the word of God every day because I'm challenged by it. You know, when you're in the word, you're like, oh, man, that's good. And then it starts getting you. You're getting convicted. You're like, oh, I don't know. What time is it right now? How long have I been reading? Get all spiritual. How huh? praise the Lord. What time is it right now? You know, God, you're so good. No, listen, that's what the word is there for. God uses his word, man. Listen, God uses his word to shape and mold you and chip away all that junk that is in you that does not bring glory to the Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 that we are his workmanship. You are his poema. God is at work in you right now, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. God is going to get the glory in your life. Think about that. And he's working in you and he desires to do it. And he does it through the word of God. He does it through our faithfulness and our diligence and our obedience to God's word and the life that we're living as men of God. That's what he does it for. And you might say, well, what's the need for a men's conference? Let me tell you something. Have you been to church lately? There's a great need. Be awesome if we can have these every weekend. Think about it. Where's my husband? It's Saturday morning. Oh, he's up over there at the church at a men's conference. Wow, again? Yes, again. Think about that. We need this. Men need to be challenged. We need to be reminded. Listen, guys, God is still working on you. You're not perfected. He's not done with you, but I blew it. That's okay. That's the best project. God's not done with you. You're his poema. He's working in you. He wants to get the glory and he will. Trust me, he will. And he knows what he's doing in your life. And you might say, well, you don't understand my situation and my circumstance. And you know what? You're probably right. I don't. But that shouldn't matter. God does. And he's working in you. And so what is he doing in you? Well, your response might be making us into a man of God. Listen, we are given characteristics as a believer as to how we are to walk. And I'll want you guys to jot these notes down because there's a lot of verses that deal with walking. But here's a couple that should get you through for a while. And read these. When you find yourself walking in the opposite direction than you should be walking the bible says in galatians chapter 5 verse 16 that we are to walk in the spirit and we will not fulfill what the lust of the flesh we're to walk in the spirit the bible says in ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 that we're to walk in the light why because we are not children of the night we're children of the day the bible says we're to walk in the light the bible also says in ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 that we are to walk in love Colossians chapter 4, verse 5, the Bible says that we're to walk in wisdom. My favorite one here in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, the Bible says that we are to walk in Christ. We're to walk in him. When you walk out of here today, as tired as you might be, I know you guys had lunch. Some of you already look kind of tired. I know how it feels after lunch sitting there. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not worried about keeping you awake. I'm not really worried about anything. I know that the power of God and his Holy Spirit is greater than the physicality of your body right now and wanting to get tired. And I'll tell you what, as you press in and you open up your ear and you hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, let me tell you something, it's going to impact your life and it's going to transform you radically. He goes on to say here, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 14, and make no provision. The problem today in the church is this. A lot of men have been making provision. And they've been making provision for the flesh. And I'll tell you guys what. 
if you don't realize that it stops today, there's going to be some problems. You see that whole thing about making provision? Let me tell you what a provision is. Remember when Jesus healed the man who was paralyzed? And remember what Jesus told him there at the pool of Bethsaida? Remember that Jesus says, hey, do you want to be healed? And what does the guy do? He gives him this big old story. It's kind of like the guy that the pastors always try to avoid. It's like, you know, if I just ask him this one question, he's going to give me the beginning and the end. And I'm going to be there for like 45 minutes. But so Jesus asked him a simple question. I'm just kidding. You guys are all sad. Oh, I, I can't approach that pastor. No, you can't. When I'm not busy, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Listen, Jesus asked him, do you want to be, do you want to be healed? What does he do? Well, every time I try to go into there, somebody else gets in and before you know it, it's, I don't know. I've been here for a lot of years. So it's everybody else's fault that you're in that condition. There's a lot of men that are like that. There's some men right now in here that they're like that. Man, if my wife, oh, if she was just only more godly, and then what do you start doing? You start looking at another man's wife. Oh, if I only just had that wife, I would be that much more spiritual, and I can be in ministry, and I can do more for the Lord. Friend of mine, that is a lie from the pits of hell. You have no business looking at another man's wife. You have no business looking at another woman in the church. The problem is not your wife. The problem is you. Oh, if my kids, if they only if they would have only if they listen to me, they give me such a hard time. I can't serve at the church. All of a sudden, it's everybody else but you. You know what? As a pastor, I meet a lot of guys like that. And you know what, guys? Listen, it's hard for me. God really gives me love in dealing with men like that. Because when I wasn't saved, oh, man, if you had excuses, it was a whole different story. You couldn't be trusted. You were no good. You weren't a man of your word. And I'll tell you what, Jesus didn't ask him all that. Jesus heals this man and then he tells him something right after. He says, pick up your mat and go. The purpose of picking up that mat, in my understanding to me, that said, David, Jesus was telling this man, make, make no provision for the flesh. Pick that mat up, get it out of here. When you walk by this healed, you're not going to see that mat no more. Because it was a mat that this man lived on for a number of years. Well, I got my mat. I'm here. This is it. Pick it up. Make no provision for the flesh. And that's what the Lord is challenging some of us men here today. Make no provision for the flesh. If there's something that's causing you to sin, and it might be something that you're seeing online, some stuff that you have at home, that secretary at work, that sister in the church, any of those things, let me tell you something, guys, you're going to get caught. It always happens. It's better to deal with it today. Be men of God and say it stops today. Maybe that might not be your issue, but that's what most of the issues is with men. Maybe it might be something else. And the Lord's putting his finger on that. And listen, and some of you here, you might not be saved. There might be some of you here that you were invited and you're not born again. I want to give you that opportunity today. You're hearing everything that's been said, and it's like, man, I want that. I want that joy. I see that peace in their life. I see that excitement in their life. And man, I want that. And listen, it could be given to you today. It could happen today. There might be some of you here today, listen, men, that you're backslidden in your heart. If you don't love Jesus Christ more today than you did yesterday, friend of mine, you're already backslidden in your heart. Already, it happens that quick. Your love for God should grow more and more as the days go by. And I ask myself, where do I stand today? You see, I serve the Lord. That's what my whole life consists of, not how are the bills going to get paid? Oh, I got to cut the grass. Oh, I this and that. I, don't, I think about, Lord, today, this is the day that you have made. Let me rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I want you to be glorified in everything. And that might seem corny to some of you guys, but let me tell you something. That's how I, that's how I get down. I'm tired of living me. I want to live Christ. I want to live Christ. I want to live in such a way that I am challenged every single step I take because I know that Christ is coming back. You know, I, you know yeah, give God glory for that. I guess this is this is the best way I could do it. Let me try to break it down to you in, 
in, in a way that I understand it. You know, I talk to myself still. And um, sometimes I say, you know what, Dave? You know, when you used to go do a hale, a hale means like a job, but not a good way. You know, when you used to go do the hale and you used to like break into somebody's house, you know. And you knew they were going to be coming home in just a little while. So you're just like trying to do it fast and good real quick. And hey, check it out. I tell myself that. I said, that's how you got to be with the word of God. That's how you got to be with your Christian walk. Don't stop because you'll get caught slipping. Don't blow it because you ain't going to get it. But always be aware. Always be ready. Always be alert and always be looking. And Jesus says, when you see these things, and let me tell you guys something, those things that he talked about, we're already seeing them. He says, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. Can I tell you guys right now that if I bump into you, I'm sorry, but I'm looking up. If you see me run into a wall, excuse me, I'm looking up. If you see that I'm driving kind of crazy, get out the way because I'm looking up. <laughs> There's something about looking up, amen? amen? And so I want to challenge some of you men today. Paul is saying, wake up, dress up, clean up, and grow up. Grow up. 